Hi there, David from Single Track here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Crank Brothers' new range of mountain bike shoes. Some companies would just launch one, maybe a few pairs of shoes at once. Crank Brothers are simultaneously launching a range that includes 15 pairs of shoes. That is more shoes than I can fit in this shop, especially bearing in mind that this is just one of each shoe rather than the pairs. It might seem like a bewildering array of shoes, but it does break down very simply into three models of shoe with three different lacing systems. And those shoes are the Stamp flat pedal shoe, the Mallet clip-in shoe, and the Mallet E clip-in shoe, which has some important differences to the Mallet that we'll go into in a bit. The three lacing systems are standard lace-up ones, speed laces with a cross strap and on the fanciest ones a boa system with a cross strap. All three models of shoe share the same upper designed by Anthony Hope who has also worked extensively with Nike. It's a PU membrane upper with a slight textured finish. There are vents in either side and some venting on the toe also some perforation through the tongue you can just see under the mesh there. There's a reinforced toe box and padding either side is minimal. That's partly because Crank Brothers wanted to design a shoe that would work in any weather conditions and any climate. So vented for hot weather, but not so bulky and padded that it absorbs a lot of water if you're riding in the rain. They didn't want the shoe to become a boat anchor on your foot by absorbing lots of water. And they also wanted it to be able to dry fast because if you want to ride every day in a climate such as ours, no point having shoes that take longer than a night to dry out. Where it is padded is the tongue and around the ankle, particularly at the back here where it meets uh, above your heel. The pronounced padding back there really creates a cup to help your heel nestle into and really help the shoe to lock on to your ankle. Another feature easily overlooked there is that there are little silicon gripper dots too. Regardless of lacing system, all of these shoes have very understated eyelets that sit underneath the upper. That doesn't just provide a streamlined look, it also means there are fewer holes for water and muck to make their way into the shoe through. Both of the lace-up types feature this inverted lace pocket at the top of the tongue. Basically you can just tuck the laces up into there once you've got the shoe secured and that doesn't just give them a clean look, it's a safety thing. It keeps flappy laces well away from your drivetrain. Crank Brothers got feedback from a whole load of professional riders during development of these shoes, but designer Vani Scarpin told me Fabio Vibma had a particular amount of insight and was particularly valuable in fine tuning the very last aspects of the shoe. So he gets this signature edition in gleaming white with a gum sole. The cross strap on the speed lace and bar models changed position three times in the years these were being developed. That's because it's not just to tighten the shoe right in front of your ankle. The angle on it actually helps drive your heel backwards into that heel cup, creating a real positive lock on your foot. There's also some safety in that. In the unlikely event that something does break your lace, or even less likely, the bar cable while you're riding, that strap will keep the shoe locked onto your foot, giving you plenty of time to stop and sort your shoe out or finish your race run. The differences between the three models of shoe become a lot more apparent when you look at the soles, which use different rubber compounds and slightly different features depending on the application of the shoe. Obviously the biggest difference is in the stamp, which is designed for flat pedals. The soles on all of the shoes are however divided into three zones. This middle zone, which is designed to interface with pedals when you're on the bike, then the heel and toe zones, which have more pronounced, aggressive, reinforced lugs to give you traction when you're walking off the bike. All of the shoes also have fairly aggressively curved toes to help you if you're walking uphill. This is especially pronounced in the Mallet E, as you'll see later. The tread patterns have also been designed to work specifically with Crank Brothers pedals. In the case of the stamp shoe, the stamp pedal. You'll see it fits in there. Now this is not some sort of very precise one-to-one -one fit where there's a an exact socket for the pedal to go into. That would kind of defeat the point of flats and turn them into something that's sort of like a cleated shoe, but worse. No, they're not trying to do that. 
what they're actually doing is that the angles and spacing match the paddle, making it much easier to find a positive lock between pins and shoes. And yet, not so hard that you can't pick different positions or reposition your shoe as needed. Part of the reason for that is all riders have slightly different anatomy and may need to sit their shoe on the pedal at slightly different angles for the sake of comfort and knee health. Another aspect to that is that stamp pedals come in different sizes and they didn't want to be prescriptive about what shoe size and pedal size riders match up. Of course, these will work with any pedals, but they've been designed to work best with the stamps. That match system, as they've called it, carries over to the clip-in shoes that they have. The Mallet and Mallet E are, of course, designed to work with Crank Brothers Mallet pedals. You'll notice there is a radial tread pattern here, and that fits the profile of the pedals, making it slightly easier to clip in and clip out. As you rotate your foot, it's not going to interfere with the pedal pins. There are also differences in the rubber compounds between the shoes. The stamp flat shoe uses Crank Brothers MC2 high friction compound, which is designed to give plenty of bite with pedal pins, but not so much you can't pick up and reposition your shoe if you need to. The Mallet and Mallet E clip and have Crank Brothers MC1 mid friction compound, because if you're using clip in pedals, you don't need as much bite from the rubber on the sole of the shoe. The, uh, the pin interface isn't as vital. And also, if you have too sticky a shoe, that's just gonna make unclipping that little bit more difficult. Going into some other features of the mallet shoe, you'll see these ramps at the front and back of the cleat box. Now, the reason these are here are to make it easier to guide your shoe on and off the pedal and to the cleat. And they put these in because when they went out to speak to downhill racers and look at their shoes, they found that various racers had been filing the rubber out of the cleat boxes on other shoes to create this feature. Unique to the mallet is this thing they've highlighted in red and called the race zone. And that is an extra five millimeters of rearward cleat adjustment. Again, they did this because they'd spoken to pro racers and found that they were actually drilling out the cleat tracks in their shoes to give them a more rearward position. This is to get more stability when descending. It also has a slightly more flexible shank for compliance and a less aggressive tread pattern than the Mallet E because it's aimed more at people who are gonna be staying on the bike and pedaling rather than people who are gonna be on and off the bike. So comparing the Mallet E, this has a much more aggressive tread pattern. It does lack that race zone and the extra rearward adjustment of the cleats also, the front ramp on the cleat box is a bit steeper. But if you look at the tread pattern, you see that these lugs are actually way more aggressive and directed towards being off the bike as well as on it. So this is solidly aimed at clip-in riders who are perhaps doing big mountain days where they might have to do hiker bike or perhaps riding park where they're on and off the bike or even just sessioning their local woods. It seems like a more general purpose shoe. It also has a slightly stiffer shank for more efficient power transmission. You'll notice I'm showing most of these without cleats, but they will apparently come with Crank Brothers cleats pre-fitted. The height of the cleat boxes in the Mallet and Mallet E is set so that you can run SPD cleats without any spacers or Crank Brothers cleats with the supplied plastic shim. That's because Crank Brothers' own cleats are not quite as tall as SPD cleats, and they wanted the shoes to be usable by people regardless of preference. One advantage of Crank Brothers' cleats is that they're not as tall as other cleats. They're supplied with a plastic shim that goes underneath, bringing them to the same level that another cleat would sit at within this box. And what that means is that, say you've been running the shoes for quite a long time, maybe the sole's worn down, you're not quite getting the same interface between pedal pins and rubber as you used to have. What you can do is remove the cleat, discard the shim, reinstall the cleat without it, and that will close those distances up, basically refreshing the performance of your shoes. A thing worth noting about all of these shoes is that they're unisex and all colors and models of the shoe are available in UK sizes four to 13. Being American, Crank Brothers have based the sizing of these on an American shoe last system, but say UK sizing should be true to size. That's to say, whatever size you normally take shoes in in UK sizing, 
that should match these, no sizing up or down to get a good fit from them. This was a brief overview of Crank Brothers' extensive new range of Mallet, Mallet E and Stamp mountain bike shoes, all of which are being brought into the country by Extra UK. On Extra's website, you can also find your nearest dealer should you wish to try any of these shoes on. As well as that, you can read more about them on Crank Brothers' website and, of course, Singletrack. Thanks for watching.